Let us take one more example for the Quinn McCluskey method. Here you are given the Boolean expression f a b c d equals min terms 0, 4, 5, 7, 8, 11, 12, and 15. So using Quinn McCluskey method, can you come up with the minimal equation or the minimal Boolean expression? So the first step is we have to form columns and we have to group the zeros and the ones. In the Quinn McCluskey method, we start off with the columns. Column one. In column one, you have group zero. Group zero is going to contain the min terms which have zero number of ones. And if you look at the Boolean expression or the min term expression, you can see that only zero has zero number of ones. Go for group one. Group one will have all the min terms which have exactly one one. That's min term four and min term eight. Min term four is zero one zero zero. Min term eight is one zero zero zero. Group two. Group two will have all the min terms which have exactly two ones. So the min terms are five and twelve. As you can see from the min terms given here. Five is zero one zero one and twelve is one one zero zero. Next we have group three. G group three will have all the min terms which have three ones. So that's seven and eleven. Seven is zero one 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 and eleven is one zero one one. And finally, you have group four, which has four ones, or all the min terms which have four ones. That's basically 15, which is one, 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 one. So this forms column one. Let's go for column two. In column two, we are going to pair the adjacent groups, and we are only going to pair those min terms which differ by one bit. Let's start with group zero and group one. Can you combine zero with something else? So can you combine zero with four? Yes, you can. So zero comma four would be zero dash zero zero. The dash indicates that there is a bit change over there from zero and four. Zero and eight also can be combined. Make sure you put a check mark for zero and four. Zero and eight can be combined and it's going to be dash zero zero zero. Put a check mark. That completes group zero and group one. Now we have to compare group one and group two. Can you combine four with five? Yes. And that's going to be zero one zero dash. How about four and twelve? Yes. 4 and 12 would be dash 1, 0, 0. Put a check. 8 and 5 cannot be combined because there is a there are 3 bits which are changing. 8 and 12 can be combined, which would be 1 dash 0, 0. That completes comparison between group 1 and group 2. Let's go for group two and group three. Can you combine five and seven? Yes, there is only a one bit change. So that's going to be zero one dash one. Put a check. Five and 11 cannot be combined because there are three bits which are changing. How about 12 and seven? No, because three bits are changing. 12 and 11? Again, no, three bits are changing. So that's all there is for group two and group three. How about group group three and group four? Uh, seven and 15 can be combined. 
So that would be dash one one one. Put a check. Eleven and fifteen can also be combined. That would be one dash one one. So put a check. This completes column two. Now we have to go for column three. Now here we need to compare the adjacent groups as we did for the previous uh, previous steps. However, the dashes ha also have to match up now. So there should be a one bit change between the adjacent groups and the dashes have to match up. So can you combine zero four with something else? The only thing that you can compare zero four is with eight twelve because that is where the dashes are aligning. Therefore. 0, 4, 8, 12 can be combined because the dash is aligned and there is a one bit change. So 0, 4, 8, 12, that would be dash dash 0, 0. Put a check. How about 0, 8 with something else? The only thing that it can be compared to is 4, 12 because the dash is aligned and in fact they can be combined. However, you should note that 04812 is the same as 04812, so you can in fact ignore this. However, you need to put a check. So that completes the adjacent groups in column 2. Uh, how about 45 with, five, four, five with something else in group 3? You cannot really do that. 412 with something else. No. 812 with something else? No. So nothing can be combined. How about column three, uh, group three and group four? Uh, as you can see, the dashes do not align up, so you cannot really compare. In fact, we are done with all the comparisons. Now the next step is mark everything which has no tick mark. So the ones which have no tick mark are this one and these three and this one. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, five terms. So these are all the prime implicants that are left out. Now to get the best possible prime implicants in your final equation, we need to use the prime implicant chart. Put down all the min terms, 0, 4, 5, 7, 8, 11, 12, and 15. So these are all the min terms in your original min term expression, which is all these ones. On the left hand side, we are going to put up the prime implicants. So the first prime implicant was 4, 5, which corresponds to so this corresponds to A prime, B, C prime. So that's A prime, B, C prime. The next prime implicant is 5, 7, which corresponds to A prime, B, D. So this is A prime, B, D. Next we have 7, 15, which is B, C, D. This one would be ACD and this one would be C prime D prime. So just put it down. 715 would be BCD. 1115 would be ACD. And then we have 04812. That would be C prime D prime. The next step is put a cross mark at every min term. So for example, here for A prime, B, C prime, the min terms used are four and five. So put a check at four and five. For A prime, B, D, we use min terms five and seven. So five and seven. For B, C, D, we use seven and 15. So seven and 15. For ACD, we use 11 and 15. So that would be 11, 15. And for C prime, D prime, we use 0, 4, 8, and 12. 
Now we have to start searching for the essential prime implicants. The essential prime implicants are, al are always going to be a part of your final equation. To find the essential prime implicant, look at the min term and if that min term column has only one x, then it is an essential prime implicant. So here, the first essential prime implicant is this one here. So all these terms, the remaining ones are going to get cancelled out. We are not going to use them. And similarly, the vertical ones. So that's the first essential prime implicant. Now can you can we find any other essential prime implicant? Yes. And that essential prime implicant would be this one. So everything from here goes away. Nothing's here. Nothing's here. And this one gets cancelled out as well because it is covered. So that's the second essential prime implicant. Now we can see that there are no more essential prime implicants. We are only left with columns 5 and 7. Here you need to be a little bit clever and choose a pair which will cover the other terms as well. And the best pairing here would be this one here because this gets cancelled away and this gets cancelled away. So your final expression would be f equals this essential prime implicant which is c prime d prime or this essential prime implicant which is a c d or this prime implicant which is a prime b d. So that's the minimal expression. Now let us try to use a k map and see if you are getting the same answer. Let's draw the k map. Plug in the min terms. So we have 1, 1, 1, 1 here. 1, 1 and 1, 1. Start making the groups. So this is the first group. This is the second group. And this is the third group. So that's the best possible pairing that you can come up with. This one would be C prime D prime. This one would be A, C, D and this one would be A prime B, D. So your F equals C prime D prime or A prime B, D or A, C, D. As you can see, these both are matching up.